Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. So, tonight, I think I need to discuss um, a topic that I think is uh, kind of a real big uh, letdown, uh, extremely disrespectful, um, and it's in regards to the new Exorcist film, Exorcist Believer. Uh, Bloomhouse's new 2023 supernatural horror film um, that is a direct sequel to the original Exorcist film that starred Ellen Burstyn and the legendary screen, scream queen Linda Blair herself. Um, so I'm going to get straight to it. Uh, there's an, there was... The trailer's come out, and I've seen the trailer, and I just have to say, this is directed by David Gordon Green, the guy behind the new set of Halloween films, which were absolutely goddamn awful, absolute travesty, an absolute mess of a bunch of films. And now he's helming the 2023 film that supposedly is a direct sequel to the original film. Um, now, and while I, I have gripes and um, everything else about it, I think it this is truly disrespectful to um, Linda Blair and her character and what she brought to the franchise. Now, I have... Um, I'll bring it up. Uh, it's a video uh, about Exorcist the Believer, about Linda Blair's role in the new film by Beyond the Mask. And I'll pop, I'll pop um, the screenshot up now that I've taken. Now, I watched his video and it was very, very informative. Um, you know, he said, take everything with a grain of salt, but there was apparently some test screenings um, with the film and apparently it had... Linda Blair's involvement and, and credit, uh, a lot of people came out dissatisfied um, with her role in the film. Now, if it is to believe, like he said, take everything with a grain of salt, but it, but it's leaning more towards being the absolute truth as it is. And I mean, come on, Linda, they didn't ask her when they first announced it. You know, Ellen Burstyn um, was signed on and fair enough. She played the mother in the original and it's fair enough that she's a part of this new set trilogy films from Bloomhouse and David Gordon Green, God help us all. Um, she signed on, which is believe, uh, which is, which is absolutely fine. She played Chris McNeil in the original and you know, she had a, she has a lot of sense of the demon knowledge and all of that of Pazuzu, but apparently Pazuzu isn't even a part of this new set of films. It's a completely different um, entity or demon or whatever it is. And so Pazuzu's not in it. And quite frankly, it's not one person being possessed by the evil demonic um, entity. It's two people, two kids. Um, so it, it's confusing as it is there. But he goes on to it, Beyond the Mask goes on to explain Linda Blair's role in the upcoming new film. Now, apparently, um, Ellen Burstyn's character, Chris McNeil, um, confronts the demon or has a run-in with it. And then the, uh, he goes on to say that um, Linda Blair's character, Reagan McNeil, comes to visit her mum and offers help. And um, they're like... Uh, no, we don't need your help. And it's like a throwaway cameo. That's her extent of her involvement in the film. Now, what the fuck is that, Bloomhouse and David Gordon Green? I mean, that is really and truly disrespectful to Linda Blair and her character, Reagan McNeil. You know, she was an integral backbone of that film. Um... And, you know, William Friedkin would, would, I don't know what William Friedkin would think of this new film, but his film was impeccable. It was amazing. It was 
scary as fuck. But what they're doing with Linda Blair as a throwaway cameo, I mean, that is really fucking disrespectful, considering Reagan McNeil was the fucking backbone of that film. She was the one that was possessed, for Christ's sake. Her performance was immaculate. And, you know, even at a young age when she did it in 1970... 1970... In the 1970s... Early 1970s. Um, you know, she was... You know, still a young teenager. You know, so... For them to be... To, for them to bring her character back as a throwaway cameo is really disrespectful. Really disrespectful, Bloomhouse. Jason Bloom, what the fuck? Um, and apparently, from what I've read at all different sources and over the, over the course of the, you know, over the internet, I've read all different things that, and apparently um, at different um, horror cons and all that, fans asked Linda Blair, did she have any involvement in the new film? Has she got any new involvement? Has she been cast? And her answer is, no, she hadn't heard anything. She hadn't, you know, they didn't ask for her involvement, which I think is really disrespectful. Like, what the fuck? She is a legendary scream queen. She is in the original film. Why would you not utilise her character? She had so much poten potential. And I know, you know, everyone, there's a lot of people that didn't like Exorcist 2, The Heretic, but I actually thought it was good. There were some parts that could have been done better. There's some things that they could have left out and there's some things they could have expanded on. But it's not the ho most horriblest film that people make it out to be that it's full on rubbish and, you know, why they, they shouldn't have made it. No. It just goes to show her evolution character, Reagan McNeil, coming back as, you know, older and wiser to the threat about Pazuzu. It added more element and depth to her character that, you, you know, she didn't think she was going to be a, you know, was going to have any connection to Pazuzu again. And then when it does happen, you know, it's in a completely different way that you never would have anticipated. So to not, ha to not acknowledge the second film with this new film, I think is really and truly fucked. Um, and I think... Um, Jason Bloom needs to, and, and not just Jason Bloom, but Bloom House and David Gordon Green need to take a step back and realise they fucked up. You know, if they've only got her in a small cameo, what the fuck? Like, that's the extent of her role, but yet Ellen Burstyn is in the entirety of the film and cast as a main character in this film, when it's like, why would you not have Reagan McNeil's character return? and help out and show that knowledge and whatnot. It adds more substance to the movie, but you know, heck, I don't know what they I don't know what's going through their brain, but really Bloomhouse, really Jason Bloom and David Gordon Green, you really fucked up with the Halloween franchise, the new set of films that were absolutely horrible to boot. And now you wanna fuck up a completely you know, established movie and myth mythos with this one, with this new set of films, and apparently the second one is called Deceiver, which comes out in 2025. So you're doing exactly the same thing now that you did in Halloween, now you're doing it with The Exorcist, with a whole set of new films where it completely fucks over a whole bunch of established characters already. You know, what the fuck? Um... Honestly, I think it's really, excuse me, I think it's really disrespectful. And I think um, it is going to crash and burn really hard, even though it has an official R rating. The trailer did not pull me in whatsoever. It made me think, do we even need this? Do we really, truly need this? You know, and it's it's just, it's it, it was... Cr cringy in parts, but it was great seeing Alan Burstyn. It was great seeing Chris's character, but that's the extent of my my excitement for that. And, and no disrespect for her, but Christ, like really, we did not need a we do not need a new set of Exorcist films, a trilogy set of films where it completely ignores. 
the events of any of the other films. I mean, hands down, Exorcist 3 is absolutely goddamn amazing. That was part of the original set of films as well, because it still mentions Reagan, it mentions Chris, it mentions the events from the first film. So it has substance, it's all there, it's got backbone, it's got the mythology there. It mentions those characters, you know, it takes care, and it's probably got one of the scary, it's got some of the scariest fucking scenes I've ever seen in a film um, to this day. The uh, hallway scene in the hospital with the big fucking shears. Oh my god, that scared the fucking living shit out of me. Still does. Um, and that's just one scene from Exorcist 3 um, that truly um, is an amazing film. Absolutely fantastic film. But this piece of shit, Exorcist Believer, is going to crash and burn, I think. And, you know, they're relying on the whole... You know, every, all the oldies will remember Ellen Burstyn. Of course they are, because they grew up with, you know, that being from the 70s. They grew up with that. Um, but, you know, to not see... To, ha to have her character, to have Linda Blair's character as a Reagan, a Reagan McNeil, as a throwaway cameo, and then you're going to not utilise her in the second film or the third film, I think is a real travesty. It's a real letdown to her legacy as well. It pisses all over it, in fact, because why the fuck did you not invite her back to have some involvement as an executive producer or something? You know, I, I just think it's really disrespectful, and I hope if... You know, anyone from Bloomhouse is watching this. Like, really, dudes? Um, but big shout-out to Linda Blair. I absolutely love Linda Blair. Um, and I, I just... I, I really, really feel let down for her that, that you know, her there's not much involvement. If that's all... Which is looking like if that's going to be the case, it's going to be more of the case. It's going to be... That's more truth to it and more weight to it than oh, we're going to save her, you know, and we'll utilise her in the second or third. The damage is already done. Scream brought, you know, the new Scream film, Scream 5, by Spyglass Media Group, brought back Sydney Prescott. And, and she wasn't just a throwaway cameo. She had an integral part in the story when she was needed. That's all Reagan McNeil needs. That's all Linda Blair needs is a significant part that brings her back, that ties her to, connectively, ties her into these new set of films. But, hey, I'm not, I'm not David Gordon Green, I'm not Jason Bloom, and I'm not, I'm certainly not a fucking movie, um, you know, a movie house, um, studio, movie studio, sorry. Um, and honestly, they're going to crash and burn with this film. I honestly think they're going to crash and burn with this film because going, judging by the trailer, it's got, it's building on some of the same old, same old tropes that a lot of films, um, have tried replicating, have tried reinventing. The only films that have any weight, um, and really reinvented the whole supernatural, um, scare, scare off your pants, um, scares and an integral story is the Insidious franchise. It really invigorated the whole supernatural gene. For, for me, personally, that Insidious reinvigorated the, the whole supernatural gene and made it so much better. The Insidious films are absolutely fantastic. Um, but with this new film being introduced, The Exorcist Believer, Sorry, but I think it's going to crash and burn. And I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've taken up your time. And yeah, I, uh, I, need to cut, I need to work on some of my other videos now that I will be posting throughout the rest of this week and into the weekend. Um, but I really just needed to talk about this topic and get it out there. Like, yeah... I, it's just so it's just I really hope they they fix it and they they make it right especially by Linda Blair's legacy um because 
like I said, she was part, she was a big friggin' backbone of the Exorcist film. Um, and in the second one, she was a huge backbone. So, you know, connectively, she's legendary, you know? Why, why use, utilize her character as a throwaway cameo? And that's all I'm gonna say with that. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, to everyone new that's watching this video, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I really, really do. Everyone returning, thank you so much. And don't forget to check out my other video that I posted a couple of hours ago on the regular show reboot. Um, I talk about the uh, it, what, that it needs a reboot or new seasons. It's a long video, it's only 30 minutes long, but I had a lot to say about that because I'm very passionate about regular show. Um, and just a little, just a little um, note that that video, uh, uh, towards the end, I do get a little bit emotional, um, especially when I mention my friend, uh, my ex and my best friend, who's my ex. Um, I mentioned his name and stuff like that because he really wanted, I would, he really would have loved um, my channel and my videos and he, he was the, he was one of the biggest inspirations for me actually joining YouTube a few years ago to start it up but I, I never had the courage to and you know, it's only been this year uh, and into a little bit last year that I actually started doing videos um, and really worked up the courage to do it. And unfortunately, he's never gonna, you know, he's never gonna see them. And I, he would have really have loved what I've done with the channel so far. Um, he loved my updates on writing, you know, so he enjoyed, you know, all the subjects that I'm talking about. He, you know, he was a big part of my life for 10 years um, that we were together, so, it, it it's very heartbreaking that he's he's just not going to be here to see to watch them to enjoy to enjoy them and get, um, me giving him updates on you know new subjects you know in movies or video games or TV series it it just yeah I get a little bit emotional towards the end but other than that guys I'm I'm signing off for the night other than that thanks so much guys for tuning in I hope you enjoy it and I will catch you very soon with the next one okay. Peace.